Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and I want to show you all this earring design that I think is very good for a beginner if you're getting into chain mail, but if you have a little bit of experience with wire wrapping. So that being said, if there's a crafter, there's a way. And I bet if you apply yourself, you'll surprise yourself with what you can accomplish. So that sounded like an AI written commercial. I promise it wasn't. Um, it's just been a long day in the studio and I'm trying to get my last two brain cells to, uh, you know, work together. So we're gonna come through here and we're using two ear hooks. There will be links down to everything down below, as well as it's basically just gonna be the tools that I'm using, which I'm using bent nose and stepped flat nose pliers, but you can use whatever you prefer. This kit from American Chainmail, which is very much depleted um, because I use it a lot, but it has, this was like, I think 25 or $30 off of Amazon and it came with the organizing case and I think it's completely worth it. So um, what we're going to be using is two, our large beads are, we need two of them, they'll be 16 gauge, 5 16 inches or 1.6 millimeter gauge with 7.9 millimeter inner diameter. We'll need 10 of these, our medium sized rings, which are 18 gauge, 3 16 or 1.2 gauge with a, a 4.8 millimeter inner diameter. And what that is, is it's just the distance of like the inside of the ring. Uh, and then we will need eight of our small rings, which are 18 gauge, 1 8 inch or 1.2 millimeter gauge and 3.2 millimeter inner diameter. Now I am going to be using some scrap 26 gauge wire. Uh, I don't know what that is in millimeters. You can go ahead and like Google it. Um, but this is American wire gauge, whereas these other ones have been listed in standard wire gauge. So that, you know, if you're trying to convert from chicken nuggets to metric, uh, that should be helpful to you. But what we're gonna start out by doing is I'm gonna show y'all how to, how I open and close my rings. And so I'll take the ring and you can see how it has that little bit of a split there. And this is from whenever rings are made, typically, they're coiled like a spring on a mandrel and then just saw cut through. You can find rings that are machine cut, but they won't have that nice flush flat end. So we're just gonna come in and open it that away so that if you line it up just right, it almost still looks like a complete circle, but it's just opened up like that. I found that if I open rings, like if we pretend my hand is a ring and I open it like this, it makes a really brittle point opposite of where the saw cut is. And then I have a really hard time getting it to close and be a circle again. So uh, that's my recommendation on that. And I have them stacked where I have a small ring first in line because that's kind of the way that it's building from top to bottom. So we have our small ring open. I'm going to open both of our medium rings and then I'm going to open these two more small rings kind of off to the sides. And now we're going to close our large ring, which to close, I like to come in and kind of wiggle those ends together. Now, as I wiggle, it's helping to kind of overshoot you know, where the ends line up, but I am applying a little bit of inward pressure with my pliers. But the nice thing about chain mail is it's a whole lot of just opening and closing rings, so you will certainly get practice in. So, oh, that's not as good of a closure as it could be. I mean, they don't have to be perfect, but on a design, design like this where there's not a whole lot going on, good closures shine. Now, I'm using aluminum rings. This design is beautiful in stainless steel rings as well. And so both of those are closed and I'm just going to set uh, the smaller ring, the medium one, inside the larger ring. And now we're going to come through and I'm going to open up these two medium rings and I'm going to open our small ring as well. So we'll go down and we'll do that on both sides so you can either 
you know, pause and kind of craft on ahead, getting the rings set up, or you can just weave right along with me, opening the two side ones. And then we're going to come in here and we will close our center medium, and then we will close our center large. And there's all different sorts of ways that you could modify this design um, with different ring sizes. The only thing that I look out for whenever I'm doing this is I want to make sure that my medium will fit inside my large, like how it is here. And I want my smallest ring to be able to accommodate two of our medium. And it also needs to be able to fit both of these rings inside of it. So you'll see, you'll get the idea. And now we're gonna do a little bit of wire wrapping. And the way that I'm going to do this, and I'm gonna try really hard to stay in frame, but please be patient with me. Okay, so we have our open ring, and I'm gonna take about three inches of wire, and I'm just gonna line that up right here, just holding on to it. And if that's a little bit of a tricky hold for you, you can totally come in with your pliers and just hold it like that. And that way it's much more stable. And I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, and five wraps around. I am not going to trim the wire yet. So here we can see Maybe. I'm just going to squish that. Oh, I didn't mean to go out of frame. I'm just squishing those together with my fingernails. And then I'm going to thread our bead on. These are some beautiful light purple dagger beads from Potomac Bead Company. But you could use basically any bead you want. I'm going to zoom back out so I stop going out of frame. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then I'm, I'm not going to push it directly up against, but I just want to bend it around so there's that little bit of space. And then if you'll notice, my wire is on top of the ring here, so I want it to be on top on the other side as opposed to coming behind it like that. And I find that that's very helpful in getting my bead to actually sit comfortably. And so now holding on to the bead, I'm going to wrap theirs once. Actually, it it looks like three. Oh, and I just ran my wire right through my rings. That's okay. And I lost count again. We're just making it up as we go, really. <laughs> so, uh, one more to grow on. Why not? And so that's how that is looking. And we can get in there. And if you can't um, squish with your fingernails, you may be able to take your pliers and just squish them together. And now that we've threaded the, the whole bead on, now we can come through and go ahead and snip. And snip. These are my absolute favorite flush cutters. I've been using them for years, using and abusing them for years. And they're still doing wonderfully, even in snipping in nice closed tight quarters like that. And then I'm gonna use my bent nose pliers to just smush burnishing down that loose end. And whenever I do that, it's a little bit of a, if you pretend like my finger's the wire, I'm just gripping with my pliers enough that I can squish it in, like, and use this jaw of my plier to, like, kind of burnish that loose end down. But the means is less important to the why. The why is I don't want a little pokey bit of wire to get tangled in my hair or clothing or scratch my skin. And so however you find works best for you is the correct way to do it. I just like to do a touch test and make sure nothing's snagging. And now I'm going to hold on, and this gets a little tricky. I'm going to hold on right there. And I am going to hold on right here, and then we're going to close that ring. And that's probably, this is probably the most challenging part of the whole thing, is just getting this bead. And you, you could skip this part entirely and just hang like a charm or something on it if you don't want to fool about with that. But I did want to show you guys how to do that because I have a whole mess of these um, smaller than this from Fire Mountain Gems that it's so difficult to like get a ring through them. 
um, like some of them I can put like a 20 gauge, you know, jump ring through and make them be a nice dangle. But most of the time I'm having to do it like this, but I, I love it. So like, I love the way that that looks. So now we're just going to assemble the earring on up. And so I'm going to take, Ooh, actually I don't want to go on up. We're going to start from the center. I'm sorry. I'm a liar. So I'm actually going to take one of our side small rings and hook it through both of our closed. And then I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. Just hooking through and really they'll end up sitting just next to each other. But what I'm trying to accomplish here is to make a little bit of like a crescent moon shape with the way that the rings sit. And it's going to be finicky at first. But you, right now we have the choice that we can offset this just a little to one side. Here's it, you know, this is it on the front side. That's it lined up just in the center. And then, ooh, tricky. This is it pushed off to the back. Do you see how I mean how that smaller ring's kind of maneuvering around? And so what I'm gonna do from here is I'm taking one of our medium rings from towards the top and I'm just hooking it through and closing it. And so if you can see here, that's how I mean, like that little crescent moon shape. And now I'm gonna thread a second ring right through that same exact spot and close it. And then I'm gonna take our small ring and I'm going to hook it through those two medium and add on the ear hook. I like to have the ear hook facing the side that has the large ring faced forward. So it's sitting like that. That's the front. Oh, actually, it kind of shimmied on around, didn't it? Well, maybe it doesn't matter. Huh, yeah, it doesn't seem to matter. Well, <laughs> if you pretend like it matters, you can like kind of push it over. And I do like it with the small ring in the back. But once you get it set up, it kind of stays that way unless you're being very rambunctious. But, uh, and now we're going to hook through just the large ring. And add on our charm. And then close it. And then we're going to do that with the second ring. Now I do have, I'm making quite a few of these earrings to list up on the website, backtoearthcreations.com, where uh, you can see all the jewelry that we currently have available for sale. But we do new shop updates every Monday, and you can sign up for our free newsletter at backtoearthcreations.com if you'd like notified about that, as well as like coupons and all sorts of stuff. So that is a very fun very versatile. Like, I think I want to make some of these just with, like, one of those uh, anodized aluminum scales from the Ring Lord hanging down off of it and all sorts of charms and things. But um, I actually prefer this design with a little bit of weight on the end because it kind of holds everything in place. But if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from you guys. And I will see y'all next time. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>